Hi folks, this is Pastor Dave Grisham here for God and Country Ministries. For God and Country Ministries, as you found us here on YouTube, we are also on Facebook, soon coming to Rumble and Truth Social whenever Donald Trump gets that up and running. I've already got uh, a notification set aside for that so that when, um, when Truth Social comes on Donald Trump's platform, we will be on it. Um, today's message is called Stock Up Now. Stock up now. And this is a, some advice I want to give you today. Um, and if you want to donate to our ministry as we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ on the streets all over North America, you can donate to us. Our cash app is uh, cash tag dollar sign for God and country Dave. Cash tag dollar sign for God and country Dave. Now that is all one word, all lowercase letters. Okay. Today, I want to talk to you about some things that have been weighing on my mind lately. This is something I've been discussing with family and friends and some Christians that I speak to personally. But today, I wanted to put out a general call because I think things are about to get much worse in America. I'm sure you've all noticed um, the shelves getting a little bit on the lean side in some grocery stores, right? seems like the trucks arrive and then they get a lot more food in there and things look sort of normal and then after a few days things don't look so normal again and then it restocks this is going to get much worse this is not going to get better the reason it's going to get worse is for three basic reasons um i'm talking physical reasons here not spiritual reasons i can tell you a ton of spiritual reasons why it's going to get worse according to scripture but that set aside this purpose of this video today is not to talk about, you know, end days prophecy or anything like that. What the, today's purpose is, is giving you some practical advice on what you can do to physically prepare for the coming harder times, which are just around the corner. There's three basic reasons why this is happening. Number one, China is closing a lot of their ports because they've had another outbreak of Omicron and whatever else. I don't know what they're doing over there. They're shutting down some of their ports. So a lot of shipments from China are starting to slow down. Uh, another, another reason is the Biden administration just passed a new rule stating that if you're not fully vaccinated, you cannot cross the Mexican or Canadian border into the United States as a trucker bringing things in to the United States. So imported goods coming from Mexico and, the, and from Canada are not going to be coming through quite as much because a lot of the uh, a lot of the drivers are hesitant to take the vaccine because it's experimental and people have died and anyway we're not getting into all that. So Mexico sells us a lot of food products, a lot of food products, a lot of fresh fruits, vegetables, things like that. Um, so because China's ports are starting to shut down, because the trucking situation at the border is getting worse. The other additional supply chain problems have not been alleviated. And then on top of that, the price of fertilizer and nitrogen are skyrocketing through the roof. The price of nitrogen, liquid nitrogen, has gone up triple and the price of fertilizer has quadrupled over the last year from the last planting season. And we are arriving very soon at planting season. And what is going to happen this planting season is because because uh, a lot of a lot of farmers cannot afford fertilizer anymore because the prices are too high. Now, mind you, it takes about let's say for corn, for example, it takes about 600 pounds of fertilizer and 50 pounds of nitrogen for one acre per acre of corn planted. Now you multiply that times thousands of acres in these really large farms, that is a lot of money. And you quadruple that price, well, they're saying that the price they're getting on the other end that they're selling it for is not high enough, so they're gonna switch crops. And a lot of farmers this year are switching to soybeans. Unfortunately, there is a soybean seed shortage. So you can see where this is going, right? So the thing for us to do as not farmers, <laughs> I would recommend several things. Number one, I'd recommend you start planting your own garden. I would recommend if you have room in your yard, 
if you have the water available for you, for you, where you can plant, I would recommend you plant a garden and grow some basics, you know, grow some basic vegetables. And I assure you, um, that will, that will help you out. That will help you out. It will alleviate some of the costs. You probably won't be able to completely support yourself on your little garden, but you will be able to offset some of the future price increases uh, for fresh fruits and vegetables, especially coming across from Mexico. And it'll all be organic and you'll get to raise it the way you want. You put whatever's on those crops that you want, you know, or whatever you're willing to, to do. And, um, and you're basically your health is in your own hands. So I think that's a good thing to do. I think everybody should plant a garden. I know we do. And um, so, but there's another thing you can do and that is you can stock up now. Stock up now, that's the title of today's video. So you can stock up now on some things that are going to help you in the long run. I wanted to explain to you, I've been studying um, these things for a number of years and um, and so I have some knowledge on this. There is a difference between short-term, mid-term, and long-term food storage. Short-term is anything you have in your refrigerator or your freezer, okay? Anything that typically lasts less than a year. Anything in your cabinets that will last less than a year is considered short-term food storage. This is where you can start, okay? Start increasing your short-term food storage Start buying, stocking up on things that you know you're going to need in the next few months, and this will help offset some of the price increases that are surely to come. And there may be some things you don't find a month or two from now that you can find now. Uh, Midterm food storage is anything that will store for, say, between a year and five years. Anything uh, that will store in that range is considered midterm food storage, okay? So long-term food storage is anything that will last more than five years, sometimes up to 25, 30, even 50 years. Actually, wheat, raw wheat, in its unground form, uh, they say will per perhaps store indefinitely. They actually found some wheat in some of the tombs over in uh, Egypt from uh, ancient Egypt, and some of the wheat that was found in there actually still sprouted. So, hey, that wheat might still be good. You might still be able to eat it, or at least you can grow it and eat what it grows from, right? What grows from it. So let's talk about food storage a little bit. Now, I want to also remind you that don't just store food. Also stock up on things that are non-food items, things that you need like soap, uh, detergent, um, you know, detergent for your, your, your lawn, your clothes, store up, uh, detergent for your, your dishes, store up soaps that you need to wash and shower with, shampoos, deodorant, body wash, you know, things like that. Store up those kinds of essential items. I'm talking about essential items. If you get a tax return this year, I would strongly recommend you do two things, one of two things with it. Either use it to pay off debt or maybe you split it between the two, pay off debt and or stock up on some supplies because the prices are going to increase, shortages are going to get worse. And I, when I say worse, I mean much worse, very bad. So anyway, so let's talk about some examples of things that you can find. Now, a lot of people wanna go online and they wanna buy stuff like this. This is Augustine Farms vegetable stew this is um we use this we use this in regular cooking because it's got all these dry, uh, freeze-dried vegetables and little bits of pasta in there and stuff and and it's really good you add meat to it and stuff like that and it's actually good on a day-to-day -day basis but this is freeze-dried it will last 25 to 30 years but this is the most expensive route okay this is the most expensive way to go and typically these are the first things that disappear whenever people start to uh, panic buy or they start to buy because they're concerned about the future. So although this is good to have, you know, and we keep a couple of these cans on hand, you know, just for use. Like there's, um, we have a can of freeze dried bell peppers that whenever we make a stew or a soup, we'll take a handful of that and throw it in there and, and let it cook in there with it. And it's really nice to supplement the food that you have. 
They also have some freeze-dried cheeses, cheese powders, like you find in the macaroni and cheese. And we'll get to that in a minute. But um, that sort of thing, um, that sort of thing can be used to enhance cooking on a daily basis. Okay. So this is long term, but this generally is more expensive and it's not always available, especially when times get short or get, uh, times get tough. But there are other things that you can do that are mid to long term storage. Now let's say you're a coffee drinker. This is freeze dried coffee. Now I know a lot of you guys, I'm not a coffee drinker, so I don't drink this stuff. I don't like coffee, my wife drinks it, so I've, we're stockpiling a little bit of this just to make sure she has some coffee because you know, when times get tough, I don't want her to drive me crazy. So <laughs> in any case, she's gonna have her coffee so she doesn't wake up in the morning and go, you know. So this is freeze-dried coffee. They actually put this in military MREs in little packets and this stuff essentially will store forever. And what they do to make this is they actually brew the coffee and then they freeze dry it into a powder. So all you gotta do is mix it with hot water. That's all you gotta do. Hot, doesn't even have to be boiling. Some people boil the water, put it in there, that's great. You don't have to do that. You can just use extremely hot water right before it boils and mix this in there really good and throw you some cream in there or whatever and uh, you got yourself a cup of coffee. A lot of people say, well, you know, I don't really like freeze dried coffee. Well, you might like it when you can't get anything else. That's what I'm saying. So this is one product that you can buy and you can stick it in your shell and forget about it, okay? You just, 10 years from now, maybe things don't get bad the next year. Maybe they get bad five years from now. This will still be good, okay? Now for more short-term storage of coffee, you can get it in a brick like this. This is Folgers. There are other brands available. Just look in your stores. Uh, they normally keep these on the top shelf because they're not super popular. So they don't always disappear when a lot of the other coffee starts disappearing. And believe me, coffee prices are gonna rise dramatically. Okay, they're gonna rise dramatically. They've been having droughts and stuff in Brazil and other places, Colombia, where a lot of coffee is grown and the transportation costs are going up. And so the price of coffee is going to skyrocket. I would recommend stocking up on it. Now, the neat thing about these bricks is it's more like fresh coffee, but what they do is they take the moisture out of it and they vacuum seal it and compact it into a brick. And so what you do is you open it and then you just kind of squish it and it turns into like a regular bag of coffee. And this will store not as long as this, this will essentially store forever, this will store for several years. I know because we've had a couple of bricks of these around and we I said, you know, let's test them. And so we took one out and made it and the coffee was just fine. And that was three or four years later. So this is good for midterm storage of coffee. And the neat thing about these is you can stack them like bricks. They're very space efficient. Stack them up in your cabinet, you know, like a few bricks. And you can stockpile a few of these and this will be good for your coffee needs, although need is a strong word for coffee. I live without coffee and I, I haven't died yet. There, are, because of the corn shortages coming, I recommend you start buying corn products. Now corn is, corn is actually found in a lot of products you don't realize. Corn is in soda. If you buy Coca-Cola or Dr. Pepper, they make the, the sugary substance they use in that is often corn syrup rather than regular sugar you want healthier sodas, if there's such a thing as healthier sodas, uh, I would buy the Mexican Cokes. Uh, they are made from actual cane sugar and not corn syrup. So you could switch to Mexican Cokes, you might be able to save a little money. That is if they can get them across the Mexican border with the vaccine mandates, okay? But uh, corn products are gonna start going way up. This means you need to start stockpiling dog food for your dogs because a lot of corn goes into dog food. And if there is a corn shortage, that means there's gonna be a shortage of dog food because they are gonna switch from using that for dog food and switch over to people food because people are gonna be demanding it, okay? Because people inherently, in the end, they care more about people than dogs. And it also means the price of dog food is going to go way up. So I would start stockpiling dog food and cat food, things like that, that you, especially the dried stuff. The canned stuff, there's not any corn in that, 
but uh, in the in the bag stuff, you know, the dried stuff, that'll store for a while. It's more of a midterm storage item. You just have to worry about mice. Make sure you store it in a plastic bucket or a metal container of some sort. Don't just start throwing bags of it up in your garage or you'll have mice in there. You will get mice in there and they will discover that treasure trove of food and they will start running off with it. Uh, corn products are in other things as well. They're in different types of soups. They're in different types of uh, other baking products, things like that. And they're also used for animal feed. That means the price of meat is going to go way up. Chickens, they use it in chicken feed. They use it in feed for cattle. Now, a lot of the farmers are switching, like I said earlier, from corn to soybeans. So while the price of soybean products may stabilize, you know, or it may be more available, um, corn products are not going to be. Now, this is, this is a food, uh, a shelf stable food product made by Marie Callender's cornbread mix. You just add water. You don't have to add eggs or milk to it. Okay. If eggs or milk are in short supply, buying a product like this is a smart choice. This is a Mylar lined bag. It's a plastic bag that is completely sealed off and this will store midterm. Okay, this is a midterm food storage item and it is basically of the same quality that you're gonna find in the long-term food storage, but it's, in a much, it's a much cheaper price. Some of the things you find at the store are actually long-term food storage items like this. You don't need to go to buy somebody like August and Arms to buy a product you know, that's long-term food storage necessarily. You can find some things at the grocery store already that are long-term storage like this. This is freeze-dried. Same kind of, that's freeze-dried, this is freeze-dried. This lasts the same length of time, okay? So you don't have to um, spend a ton of money. If you bought this through August and Farms or something, you'd be spending three times as much. But corn, this cornbread mix, is this is only like three bucks and it's at one pound, one pound. And it makes a, a nine by nine and a half, a couple inches thick of cornbread. And we buy these, this is the honey butter. They also have regular. And uh, speaking of honey, honey is a sugar product. Your basic sugar, I would store sugar and salt as well. I'd stock up on sugar and salt. I would also stock up on honey. Honey lasts forever. It does not go bad, ever. It will last 30, 40 years. It'll last longer than you. So you can stock up on some honey for a sweetener. You can stock up on regular white sugar. You, the brown sugar does go bad because it has molasses in it. So that's a midterm storage item. It's not a long term. But salt and sugar, basically by themselves, if you keep insects and moisture out of it, will last forever. Salt never goes bad. Sugar never goes bad. Honey never goes bad. But you need to start buying some cornbread mixes or buy some corn products where before the prices start going way up and shortages begin to appear. Because when this corn shortage hits at the, later on this year, when they're not planting as much corn, um, you're gonna see a lot of changes in your grocery stores, okay? If you want some of the things that are in there now, I would suggest you get them. Here's another product that you can buy. Now this has some freeze-dried cheese in it, okay? Same kind of stuff like you get in the little packets with the uh, macaroni and cheese. Macaroni and cheese is a good long-term food storage because pasta does not go bad for way more than five years. It will last a lot longer than five years. If you keep it in the original box and keep it airtight or you could put it inside of a bucket or a container and stick it up in your cabinet to make sure that moisture and everything stays out of it. Uh, it also has the freeze-dried cheese. Now that freeze-dried cheese will last 25, 30 years. The same is true with this. This is like three or four dollars at the grocery store. This makes a half a gallon of soup. This is cheddar and broccoli. Their soups, these Bear Creek soups and other, there are other companies that make products similar to this. These are great. You can add meat to this. You can make a soup and add meat and turn it into a stew. You can add bigger vegetables and turn it into a stew. Okay, get creative. There's an old saying that you're gonna learn, that you're gonna need to learn, and you're gonna need to memorize from the Great Depression because we may be looking at a Great Depression just around the corner. 
because of the direction that the world is going in. It's not just America, this is the entire world. And that expression is this, use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without. Remember that, use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without. That applies to your clothing, that applies to every product you buy, use it up completely. Okay, wear it out. In other words, make sure it's no good to wear anymore or use it anymore. Uh, use, it, use it up, wear it out, make it do. In other words, be creative with the things that you do or do without. Learn to get by without it. Like, you know, you can get by without this. <laughs> I do every day, but a lot of people don't want to. Uh, tea, by the way, tea will store about as long as this. If you, if you like tea, uh, if you keep it stored, it'll store several years without any problem. But these are good products right here. They're not that expensive. You can buy them in the stores. You can stick them in a bucket because mice can get into this. Any of these soft packages like this, mice can get into. So you need to store them in Rubbermaid plastic containers or you can put them in a... You can go to Lowe's and buy five-gallon plastic buckets and stick these things in there and then stick them in your cabinets or in your garage and then get into them as you need them, okay? Another place you can get things that are really cheap is right here. This is a great value, this is a Walmart product, but they make a lot of different products like this by a lot of different brands. And this is sour cream and chive, they also make cheddar potatoes, and this is essentially dehydrated potatoes. Inside this box is a bag a wax-lined bag of uh, dehydrated potatoes and then a freeze-dried mix that you put in there that's similar to what you find in here, okay? They use similar products across different product lines. So that, that packet in there will store long-term and the dehydrated stuff is more of a mid-term but longer mid-term. In other words, it'll last more than five years, but it'll last on the, on the farther side of, of the longer term. It'll be more long-term than just your average mid-term food storage item. So these, these are not very expensive. Even right now, these are like a dollar or a dollar 25. You can buy these things and stock up on them, and you can buy some big plastic totes, you know, square totes, and stack these in there. Maybe you stack the coffee in there too, you know? There's little, like little squares, put them in there like bricks. These are good for longer term food storage and they're potatoes. So if the price of potatoes goes up or there's a potato shortage, there's these freeze dried potatoes in here that'll last a long time, okay? And these are not very expensive. You can afford to stock up on those. Another one here, this one is, very, is fa a favorite with Mexican people and these are highly available here in the Southwest, here in Texas. <clears throat> they're probably available in your area but the different ty there's three different types that I've seen. There's the red lid, green lid, and brown lid. The red lid is tomato based. This is a tomato based, um, I guess like a bouillon, but it's a powder. This is basically powderized, freeze dried tomatoes is what this is, okay? This is about $5 for this. And there are, let me see how many servings in here. There's a lot of servings in here. This one has 226 servings per container. That's a lot of servings. This is a good base for soups and stews and things like that. And what the Mexican people do is they buy these little boxes. They're about this big, and I don't have any to show you, but they're about this big and they have a plastic bag inside the box, and inside the plastic bag is, uh, is basically um, a, a pasta, at different shapes, like little stars or whatever, you know, these little decorative shapes of pasta, and what they do is they cook that pasta in with this, and they make a tomato-based soup with pasta in it, and it's really good. Now, the green lid is chicken flavor. I have some of those, and the brown lid is beef flavor. So if you need basic stuff to cook with, like a tomato-based stock, or you need a chicken-based stock, or you need a beef-based stock, those are good, and they're long-term storage. 
if you need long-term storage for basics for you know just a foundation for adding to other thing other things to it this is good you can bake like this and you can you can add stewed tomato a can of stewed tomatoes to this you know you can add um to in, to make more tomato flavor you can you can add uh, meat to it you can add pasta to it you can turn it into a super stew and it's very good stuff and this will last a long time and it's only five bucks you can stockpile these, throw them up in your cabinet, and they will last for years, okay? And these are just things you buy at the store. You don't have to go online and buy like Augustin Farms or Wise Food Ready or whatever, these other long-term. I know you've been seeing them pop up in your news feeds on Facebook and stuff. Uh, you don't have to buy that long-term food storage stuff that costs a lot of money, okay? This is a grocery store item that will last quite almost nearly as long and it is much, much cheaper. And that's what you're looking for, okay? Something that's affordable. Next thing on our list is canned goods. Canned goods are a moderate to long-term food storage item. Some, there have been some studies done where they found some canned goods from the Civil War that were actually found in the bottom of a ship uh, that were at the bottom of the Mississippi River. And they took the canned goods out and they noticed that because of the temperature and the water and the oxygen cut off and everything, that the cans were not breached. And so they opened the cans and nobody really had the guts to eat them, <laughs> but they did study them. They tested them in a laboratory and found that not only would they not make you sick, they still contained about 70% of their original nutrients. So, you know, those were good for food storage, right? Those will last a long time if you keep them in the right conditions. They need to be kept in a cool, dry place, like in a cabinet or in a bucket somewhere, in a cool, dry place. This is a can of tomato soup. Uh, different items and different cans will last various lengths of time. I have found that the cans that have fruit in it oftentimes are very acidic and they don't last as long. But the cans are coated on the inside based upon the acidity level of what's inside. So the cans that have more acidity, like like uh, things like, well, you know, like, like oranges or, or peaches or whatever, any kind of fruit, like especially or like uh, uh, pineapple, things like that, that have more acid in them, it'll have a plastic lining, a plastic coating inside of the galvanized steel can. Canned goods last, I've had, I've, actually had some donated to me, given, given to me, this lady that lived next door, she said her grandfather passed away and she gave me some, she says, I don't really eat this stuff, maybe you want it. She gave it to me and it was five years past the expiration date or past the, the you best buy date. Um, and um, they were so good. We ate them and they were just fine. Now, about the dates on the bottom. Canned goods will last way longer than the dates you find on the bottom. These dates you find on the bottoms or even on any of these foods, you might find it stamped on the label on the side, or you might find it stamped into the top of the box, embossed in the box, various places. Lawyers put them on there and they do it for liability purposes. It doesn't have anything to do with reality, okay? It has to do with lawyers going, oh my gosh, if somebody eats something that's old and they get sick, they're gonna sue you. Make sure you put this date on there so it covers you liability. You know, was, that's what that is for. This is a bunch of lawyers that wanted this put on here, okay? And I'm sure the FDA requires certain things like that as well. But it's mainly lawyers that want expiration dates put on stuff. So expiration dates are important on fresh items like milk. It's not so important on canned goods, okay? Now, speaking of milk... Here is a product that is very popular in Mexico, but it's not so popular here in the United States, but it's available in the Southwest part of the United States because we have a lot of Mexican people here. And they buy this stuff a lot. Now you're gonna find powdered milk, but mostly what you find in other areas is powdered skim milk, and that tastes like chalk. I mean, this stuff is terrible. You might use it for cooking or something, but not really for drinking or making drink mixes or whatever. This is different. This is freeze-dried, and this costs about, for one can of this, about $18, okay? $18, $20, something like that. Let me see how much is in here. This is freeze-dried whole milk, okay? When you mix this up, 
It is whole milk with all the milk fats in it, okay? This will last for years in your cabinets, okay? It'll last for years. And this is fortified with vitamins A, C, calcium, iron, and zinc. So this is, this. they use this in Mexico. A lot of the Mexican women cannot afford formula for babies. So they use this for babies, okay? And some of this you find is actually formulated for babies and stuff. So this is good to throw in your cabinets that'll keep for a long time. Now this is a almost five pounds, 4.85 pounds. It says not for children under one year of age. That's that's what it says on the can here. Not, this one is specifically is not for under, under one years old, but there are some that are. And in a pinch, you might have to use this, okay? You might have to. All right, now, uh, how much does it say it makes? Uh, it says there are 73 servings per container, and each serving is a quarter cup. So you can divide 73 by four and come up with how many cups this will make. I'm not sure how many gallons that is. I think it's around three gallons. This makes about three gallons of milk. So here you got three gallons of long-term food storage milk. This can be used for cooking. It can be used for, you know, like and if you have any of these products like this, baking products that require milk, but you don't have any milk, milk's not available, it's in short supply, it's $15 a gallon. I mean, you know, you know, whatever it is, this you can buy now at a cheaper price and stock it up and then use it when it's more expensive, okay? Now, make sure that you also store toilet paper because what goes in must come out, right? What goes up must come down. What goes in must come out. At least you hope it does. And you're going to need toilet paper. So start stocking up on toilet paper now. And let me tell you how to get around some of the limits. Okay, there. I, I did this before. I've done this myself. These stupid store limits. You go into, say you go into Costco, where you can only buy one bulk box of toilet paper at a time. One per day, it's all you can have. Okay, not a problem. You go through with one, you check out, you go put it in your vehicle, you go right back into Costco, grab another box, one box, because they're only gonna let you have one, and go to another register. These people don't, they're not gonna recognize you. Go in with a mask once and go with them without a mask the next time. And go in and just go to another register and they will not catch you, because I did it a lot. Or you just run down to Sam's Club and buy one over there. You go to multiple stores. If you're finding shortages in places or limits, if you're saying, oh, they're only limiting you to meat, you can only have one package of meat, well, go to another store. Get another pack, go to one store, and then go to another store, go to another store, and get what you need, okay? Just bypass the limits. These are just limits they put on you, but you don't have to obey them, okay? You're not bound by these limits. You can get around them. And I don't, it's gonna be a while before they start putting limits on stuff like this, but they might. They might put limits on stuff. Um, now let's address the issue of hoarding. Some people like to call this hoarding. Well, let me ask you this. If you had a million dollars in the bank, are they gonna claim you're hoarding cash? You're hoarding money? No, they don't. If you have the money to buy the food, they don't say anything about it. But if you buy a bunch of food, now they, or you're a hoarder. No, you're not a hoarder, okay? You're not a hoarder. Stocking up on food is smart. It's what they used to do in the Bible. Let me explain to you right quick about that. Let's imagine you were back in the days of the Bible, okay? You worked on a farm. You lived on a farm with your family, okay? And let's say you raised wheat. So you raised your wheat crop, okay? So what did you do with your wheat crop after the wheat crop came in? Well, first of all, you gave a, a percentage of it uh, to the temple because that was your tithe. You either sold it and gave them the money or you actually gave them the wheat, okay? The second thing you did was you set aside another percentage of it for planting for next year because you got to have seed to replant. So you set aside that. Now you got some now you got something else that's left over. Now if you've got any servants you have to pay and you're paying them in wheat or whatever, then you take that 
whatever wheat you got left, you take some of that, another percentage of it, and you give it to your servants so they have food, so they get their pay. Now, let's say you don't have any servants. Let's just say you're a family and you're all working together. You don't, you can't afford servants. You know, only wealthy people can afford servants, but they have bigger farms. So uh, let's say you don't have it. So you, after that, you have to set aside whatever you're going to use for the next year. You have to stockpile. You have to stock up, right? Because there are no grocery stores. People have gotten these attitudes about hoarding since grocery stores have come along. Folks, grocery stores have only been around for like 150 years. Before that, you didn't have grocery stores. You had marketplaces where when things came in season, when the farmers uh, brought in their potato crops, they sold their potatoes, whatever. See, and that's what happens next. If you say you're growing wheat and you have, you, you took enough wheat for yourself that you needed for the next year until the next crop came, because you got to eat for a year, right? You and your whole family, whatever you might have left over after that, you can sell or you can trade. Oh, guy next door, he raises goats. I need some, I need some cheese. So you trade some of it for cheese. He gets some wheat, you get some cheese, right? So anyway, you, you stockpile enough that you need and then you sell what's left over. That's exactly what they did in the marketplaces. The only time you'd find a market is when there was a surplus of food that they could sell to the people in the cities and the people in the cities relied on the farmers having a surplus of and above and beyond what they needed for themselves and their own communities. And then they would sell these things in the marketplaces. If there was a famine, the people in the cities were the first ones to starve. There were no grocery stores, okay? And you could go and you could buy extra wheat and stock it up in your house or whatever, and your home, if you could store it and get by that way, but if you're not on a farm, you're, you know, your options were limited. But what I'm, my point of this is that storing up food is like storing up money in a savings account, except you can't eat money, okay? Food is life, you need that to survive. So stocking up on food is biblical, it's practical, it's smart. People that don't do it are lazy or stupid or um, deceived by the culture. They listen to people rather than listening to the Word of God. The Word of God talks about stocking up. Joseph told Pharaoh um, that he was uh, that he was going to see seven years of plenty because of his dream about the cows and the wheat. He he said you're going to have seven years of plenty followed by seven years of drought. So they stockpiled food for seven years, so they could survive the seven years of lean times. So this is biblical, okay? Lean times are coming. Do like Joseph and the Egyptians did. Stock up now. Stock up now, folks. Get ready because it's coming. Things are just going to get worse. I just wanted to give you some practical advice on what you could do from my experiences and stuff and my knowledge of going to the grocery store and just showing you a few items here that you can, you can do. Remember, there's short-term, mid-term, and long-term food storage. Anything that's in your refrigerator or freezer is short term, a year or less. Anything in your cabinets like canned goods is at least midterm. Box items, midterm to long term. Freeze dried items are long term. Okay? So start storing, start your storage by stocking up as much as you can on the short term and then adding to your midterm. And then when you got enough stocked up on your midterm, start going long-term. You know, or you could do a little long-term here, a little long-term there of things you really want. Like if you're really a coffee freak and you really think you might just go ballistic and start shooting all your neighbors if you don't get your caffeine, then maybe you might want to start stocking up on some coffee for all our safety, okay? So anyway, I hope this message has been helpful for you today. <coughs> I hope it's been edifying and I hope it's been educational. And... Um, Brethren, we all need to be on our knees praying at this time. There's one food item, the bread of life, right here. This is my wife's pink Bible. Um, this is what you really need to stock up on. This is all good for your physical survival in the here and now. This is really long-term food storage survival. This is eternal survival, the bread of life. Because if you eat of that bread, 
and drink of the living water of Jesus Christ, you will never, you will never hunger or thirst again. There are no food shortages in heaven. There's no, the economy is doing just fine in heaven. Okay, there's no corrupt government in heaven. You go to heaven, you're gonna find rest. You're gonna find peace. You're not gonna to have to worry about all these things that are going on, okay? And you can have a little bit of that peace here on this earth. You can have a peace that goes beyond all understanding by giving your life to Jesus Christ today, by repenting of your sins and giving your life to Jesus Christ so that you can have long, long, long-term survival, which is eternal. But you're only gonna get that through Jesus Christ. Okay, all right, God bless you all, and you have a good day.